Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of that church and we're here in chapter 12 of Hebrews. Right. And it's a good day. It is a good day. Yeah, because God is our God and he is still on the throne. He's never left it. That's right. Because here <laughs> he's in us, he's with us, he's for us. How can he be on the throne and here with us? Because by his spirit the same spirit that came on Jesus mm -hmm. right yep and he walked through this life we walk through this life isn't Jesus then our example and that's what I want you to see today he is an example of faith and here we're we're in chapter 12 let's let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into it all right, right? yes so father God you are the one that's teaching us your ways of doing and being right. And we look to you. We grab a hold of you by our faith. With, with this hand of faith. We thank you for all that you're doing. Through us. Not just us. But all those that are listening that ever will listen. I thank you that you're speaking your thoughts into us and into them and speaking your thoughts through us confirming the thoughts that are in everybody that will ever hear in Jesus name amen 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 so today's a good day we're gonna look at Jesus as our example mm -hmm. isn't that quite something we're gonna do a quick review and I, I want you to see this. I, I want you to see that we're talking about faith. Why are we talking about faith? Because we need it. It's what every one of these people in this hall of faith received by. Right. And it's impossible to please God without it. So right. we need our faith. We're, we're connecting with our God yes. by our trust, <clears throat> our reliance, our, our believing, our our faith mm -hmm. what is our faith well that very first sentence of chapter 11 says now faith is the the assurance the confirmation the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof and the of the things we do not see and the conviction of the reality faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses <clears throat> what I want you to see is faith is substance mm -hmm. faith is is the the making up of all that we desire right and what are we desiring well that's where we get hope from we we put hope as as you see in the last verse of this uh, chapter well the second to last verse uh, verse 39 it says and all these talking about all these men and women that received mm -hmm. all these through though they won divine approval we have to win divine approval by faith yeah that how do you please God without faith right how do you win divine approval without faith and whose divine approval do we want? We want God's. Yes. God's divine that's, approval. That's right? who we're seeking to get approval from. And so it says, all these through... Though they... Um, yeah. Though they won divine approval by means of their faith, they not... Oh, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Wait a second. Now we threw another word in there that, that means something, right? promised who promised it god the father promised us so many different things and here i keep saying there's 630 or 660 promises there's a whole bunch of promises in this bible seek them out and you will find them right 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 so there's there's a whole bunch my wife was kind of doing a google search do you believe google Sometimes. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. But sometimes. there's thousands of promises, and it's so exciting to be right. looking in there and finding them. So what I want you to see is 
that this faith in verse 1 is the faith it's talking about in verse 39. And then it goes on and it says, These heroes and heroines of faith should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. We're to join them in this faith. Mm -hmm. We're to do it by faith. This whole life that we're living, we're to do it by faith. And here, what did he say before that? I know I, I skipped halfway through verse 40 because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us. What? Than all these of old? Wow. Yes. Do you see it? There's, there's more that's available to us than was to those. Wow. In this chapter of Heroes of Faith. Mm -hmm. it, it would be great just to ascribe to what they did. But what we're going to look at today, I, I know I skipped all the verses in the middle, but all those verses in the middle are talking about faith that they had. Right. Is it the same faith? Yes, it's the same faith. But they, they were in a time period that was before the cross. They were looking unto something, right? Mm -hmm. They were looking unto the cross, this, this, this man, that this seed that God was going to bring mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. And they were trusting in something that was in the future. And it says they didn't, they didn't get it completely. And it says here in verse 40, because God had us in mind that and, and had something better mm -hmm. and greater in view for us so that they, these heroes of faith, should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. Us in joining them in faith, us in 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 moving in faith we're all doing it after we're all right. looking backwards right. saying jesus mm -hmm. jesus the one that was to come that was the what we're going to see today the the author of all of this of the faith that the men of old did things by mm -hmm. jesus was that author of it all not just for us going forward he was the author of everything for them and here he's the author for everything for us after the cross, okay? Mm -hmm. And isn't that where, going all the way back to, to Hebrews 1, once Jesus accomplished, in verse 3, um, it's halfway down there, it says, gosh, let me just read the whole thing. He is the sole expression of the glory of God, talking about Jesus, the light being, the outrain or radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by the uh, by his mighty word of power. That's God, right? When he had, by offering himself, accomplished, he accomplished something. Uh, he accomplished our cleansing of sin and riddance of guilt. Wow. If you have guilt in your life, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. It's a weight that holds you down, which we'll talk about when we get to chapter 12. And what, I, what we want you to see is from that point, from the point of the cross? No, no. From the point of him going to hell? No, no. From the point of him being raised? No. All of it together <laughs> from that point forward. We're looking unto he's already made that way for us. Thank right? You, and him being that way has brought us to this point of verse 40 because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us, for us, so that they the heroes of faith, the heroes in Hebrews 11, right. mm -hmm. should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. 
and we're joining them in faith as we move forward with God, right? Yes. And it's according to his precious promises. <clears throat> That's what I keep talking about. You have you have to build up for yourself this this tree of hope. And this tree of hope is things in the word of God that you find and you and you you get excited about. You see that you don't have that in your life and you say, "Well, I want that in my life." And you take that to yourself and you start thinking upon it. You start meditating upon it. As he told Joshua in verse 1-8 of Joshua, right? And here, that's how you progress and come up, right? As you come up and you, you keep these things in you, in your going in your eyes, going in your ears, you have to speak them out. You have to speak out your faith that you can hear it with your own ears. And, and you will see it with your eyes. Because God isn't going to let one of his promises fall. Right? He's not going to let one of his words fall without it accomplishing that which he pleases. Right? Right. Go back to Psalms. That's what it was saying in Psalms. Right? And here... We, we come into this place of going forward with God. And here, we, by the Holy Spirit then, God, the Holy Spirit, builds up, paints on the canvas of your heart with these promises that you're building up this tree of hope until this tree of hope becomes alive by that which the revelation knowledge the Holy Spirit gives you. Him revealing to you how the words are going to be alive for you in your life. You get it? I, I, I'm not getting out exactly what I want to say, but know that you got to build up this tree of hope. With the Holy Spirit, you, you meditate on the Word, on His promises, and see that He's promising them to you. And then that revelation knowledge, you move on with that revelation knowledge as the Holy Spirit has given it to you. That's when that you've received. You, you then are, are ready to receive at that point. Just like Joshua was ready to receive and go in and take the land. Right? That's good. You go in and take those precious promises that you've been meditating on right. and holding to exactly looking for god to put it in your life and so as you do those things that's what brings us to chapter 12 because it's going to get into talking about something that you're as you're moving forward with god the enemy's trying to come and take the word out yeah he's Steal coming because word. he's coming because of the word mm -hmm. not because of you so don't take it personally <laughs> and that's what this really Chapter 12 gets into talking about. So here we go. Therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside any encumbrance, any unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. I want you to think of it this way. If <clears throat> remember those in the wilderness um, that did not believe the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, mm -hmm. that came back with the good report of right. the land, right. they didn't believe what the father said about the land and hold and cling to that promise mm -hmm. that God said. Right. Because they didn't cling to that promise, they didn't mix it with faith. Right. Right? That's what the Word says. And here, it's, it said it all in this book. And here, because they didn't do that, they fell, is what the Word says. They fell from trusting God, believing in God. And because of that, they could not enter into the promised land. Just like if you you want healing for your body and you build up a tree of hope for healing for your body, 
you you then let the Holy Spirit, while you're meditating on it, paint on the canvas of your heart till it's a vibrant picture that it is yours. And you can see that it's yours. That's what I wanted to get out earlier. Mm -hmm. And here, when you have that, know that your deliverance from those things is ever approaching your possession. Mm -hmm. Right? Faith grabs with the hand of of faith you grab and connect with that anointing mm. on god right that is wow. god okay verse two looking away from all that will distract to jesus who is the leader and the source of our faith giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher bringing it to maturity and perfection Okay, he, we talked about that. Jesus is that source. Right, of our faith. And he's also our finisher. He's working alongside of us and in us by his spirit to finish what we... That's, that's, the, that's the getting the revelation knowledge of that hope tree that you got, right? He's the finisher. He's putting the... Painting, painting the finishing touches of... On the canvas of your heart as you meditate. Do you see that? That's what I wanted you to see. All right. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I have something I want to say about that verse. Hooray! <laughs> um, sometimes when you're reading, you're reading it in light of different things that are going around you and going on around you and i've talked to a couple of people recently about children and discipline and, and rough times they're going through and and i've also read this in a few different translations but it says he jesus for the joy of obtaining the prize what was the prize him him winning over the devil for us him him restoring relationship with us but he had a prize in mind which is when you're thinking about things, what are you believing God for? That's your prize. So you keep that in mind. You keep that kind of like a vision. And if, as a mommy, because I'm a mommy, so I could speak to those mommies, you've got the prize in mind of children that are disciplined, children that are seeking God and loving God, and you endure what is set before you. You endure these difficult times. You endure times when your children are, are disobeying or when your children are kind of being wayward. And you keep that prize in mind, that promise. You find that promise that God says that when you teach your children, they won't depart from it. <clears throat> you keep those prizes in mind, and you ignore the shame, and you endure the cross, and you keep that prize before you. And he, for the joy of, of obtaining the prize, that's how we go through. And that's how we go through by faith, believing that he's going to help us. And now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And now you can be seeing the promise of God fulfilled for you and your children. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. So I want to point out one, one little thing there. Great. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize. The prize is that hope tree. Right, what you're believing which for. Which he is putting the finishing yeah. strokes on as you stay focused on him. Right? Right. In the, in the wilderness, they had the serpent put on the tree, mm -hmm. right? On the pole. On, on the pole, right? Which was a cross, right? And here, Moses told him, God told him, if you intently gaze and keep your focus on him, you'll be healed. Mm. That hope tree is what I'm talking about. You have to keep your gaze on him and, and in light of the scriptures you're looking at. If you're looking at scriptures on healing, you've got a healing tree. And your healing is coming as he finishes the brush strokes. It's building. Yeah. If, if you're believing for furniture or, or a house or, or cars or, or whatever you're believing for, make a vision board. Keep it before you. Right. And here, find that hope tree. Words, promises from God, and you look unto those words that Jesus is the author of and the finisher. He's going to put those finishing brush strokes in the canvas of your heart that that's when it'll come into the light of being. 
right? Right. Okay. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials, so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. Okay, so this is where he, it somewhat changes what he's talking about. And, and it's all about this. Reckon up and consider it all comparison with your trials. What trials do we go through? Well, when you get into believing God for something, the enemy's coming against you. He's going to use people. A lot of times the closest people to you. Right. Because you can't get off of your speaking words of faith toward your hope tree. If if you're speaking you you've got a hope tree for for a car and here you're saying well i i i believe i receive my car well when your loving family member calls you up and says oh did you get your car yet yeah i got my car well where where is it what what kind is it i don't know but i i got i believe i got my car are, are you have on your vision board what kind of car you're believing right. for? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can say, yeah, it's this kind of car. Mm -hmm. Well, when did you get it? Oh, I got it when I prayed. That's right. <laughs> I, I got it when when I believed. Mm -hmm. My God for it. Yeah. And he's finishing the, the touches of the brush strokes mm -hmm. on your heart of your hope tree. Right. You can't speak against it. If... If you start talking some other way with your loving family members or are are those that are out in the world that are your friends that don't believe the same way you do, that's what he's talking about. These sinners are going to come up and and be just like it was to Jesus. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition. What grievous opposition did Jesus Jesus get was it the cross that we're talking about no it was all the stuff I think it was even from childhood up he talked one way all the time and you see that in James mm -hmm. James was the half brother of Jesus and you see that Jesus, James brings forth something that I don't really see a whole lot in other books about but I believe it was because he was raised in that same family, in that same household. You see how Jesus was talking different than everybody else. And he received, received such grievous opposition from them. But what he was believing for, I believe, always came. How do I know that? What am I basing all that off of? Is what was said by God Almighty... When the Holy Spirit came down on him, when he got baptized, was he getting baptized for the remittance of sin? No, he was getting baptized for his anointed, being anointed of the Father, for his ministry that was just getting ready to be started, right? Because right after that, you see everything starting with his ministry. Before that, he perfectly pleased the Father. And it, it go back to 11.6. It says, chapter eleven six. it says, But without faith it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to God. Right. Jesus was satisfactory completely because he did it all by faith. And we can be too when we're in him and doing things by faith. So the rest of this, a good portion of the rest of this chapter is talking about what you do when people are coming against you and and how you look at things and here he's saying reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials what jesus went through you're gonna go go through a certain number of these things and here we have people that are gonna come against us and i know we're making this long but <laughs> this is this is the meat of what you need to get out of this this chapter for these days that we're living in. Because here, if you're going to go out and do something for God, with God, mm -hmm. you have to 
Keep your faith in him. And I'm speaking to myself just as much as I am to you. I'm receiving it just like you're receiving it. I, I have to receive what I'm saying because it's God saying through his word, this is how you're going to proceed proceed in mm -hmm. life is by faith. You have to do it in faith with his scriptures. If he tells you to do something, you have to find those scriptures to do it by. He's going to point them out to you. And then you have to put those so much in you that they're they're. You can quote him at any moment of any day, right in the middle of sleep. He'll wake you up and say, what is this say? What is, what are you believing in? Because it's your belief in him, in his precious promises, like it said in, in verse 39 of chapter 11, that we're trusting in and moving forward in, right? And with, that's our tree of hope that I'm talking about, those scriptures that he's given you to move forward with about your family, about raising your children, about about moving forward in your ministry as you move forward with that tree of hope and let him brush the finished strokes of the painting of your heart, right? Of those things that you've laid your hope on. Then your, your wow, your revelation knowledge will come forth as the Holy Spirit is working with you and those are the things you're going to move forward in life with. And he said that several times in this whole book as we went through these things. But this is where it brings us to what is coming against us. Remember, it's the enemy trying to take out the word. Exactly. Yeah. Coming to steal the word. Go back to Mark 4 and read that 3 through 33. It's talking about Jesus is giving us the the way that everything in our lives are going to happen, how we get revelation knowledge, how we, we get these things, and what is coming against that. Right? Okay, here we go. Verse 4. You have not yet struggled and fought agonizingly against sin, nor have you yet resisted and withstood to the point of pouring out your own blood. That's what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. right? He poured forth blood. As perspiration came forth, blood was coming out with that perspiration. Those fine um, pores, <laughs> arteries is what I wanted to say, okay. but veins okay. at, at the surface because of the strain and stress that was coming on him mm -hmm. from the enemy trying to take out the word. Right. What was he saying? The, he was saying what the enemy was saying. If there's some way that I can not have to go through this well the enemy was trying to keep him from going through that right so was that what the enemy was saying here he he is was doing it as a man you have to see it that way and here he was dealing with the same pressures that we deal with not accomplishing what god wanted him to accomplish not you not accomplishing what god wants you to accomplish Stay with it. Hang in there. Right. God, Jesus went through this. We can go through this. Absolutely. With his help, the Holy Spirit's help. Yeah. Right? Okay. And have you completely forgotten the divine word of appeal and encouragement in which you are reasoned with and addressed as sons? Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> My son. Do not think lightly or scorn to submit to the correction and discipline of the Lord, nor lose courage and give up and faint when you are reproved or corrected by him. For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom he loves, and he punishes even scourges every son whom he accepts and welcomes to his heart and cherishes. You must submit to and endure correction for discipline. So you receive that discipline by faith. If you're going to resist that discipline, it's not going to help correct you, and it's not going to help you grow. I want to shine a little bit more light on this. The way I was talking at the beginning of, of people trying to take, take the word out of your heart, trying to get you to say something other than what your mm -hmm. faith is set on, right? Right. That's also the same thing he, what he's talking about there. He's, he's, 
he's bringing it to your understanding that there's mm. different ways to look at this. All right, you can look at it as the Lord's correcting you, or you can look at it as the enemy's trying to steal this from you. But all the while, you're getting refined. Okay, talking about, he brought up refining. The refining, whenever you put gold into the fire to refine it, you get the stuff out of it that are other metals that have, have are mixed in there with it. But the more that you refine it, keep putting it back into that fire to remelt it, those things come up to the top, to come up to the surface. What is the surface of our lives? It comes up with something that we have to deal with and put away from our lives. Put those things out so that your pure, your motives are purer, that you're, <laughs> you're moving on with God in a pure way of life. Mm -hmm. You see those mm -hmm. things? That's, I believe, a bit more of what he's, he's not coming to correct you and, and spank you. Though, it, it would seem that way. Because you're not listening sometimes. We, we all fall into <laughs> yes. those things. And I'm talking to myself. I don't, I don't get into listening to him. He's telling me to, to do certain things. And I don't do it. Because I'm lazy. Or because, oh, that just seems so dreadful. Grievous. <laughs> Grievous. <laughs> because to... to to do something in your flesh is, you know, sometimes your flesh just doesn't want to do it because you like your, you know, going on a diet is kind of one of those things. Eating right, not so much a diet, eating right and not eating all the junk food. Mm -hmm. Well, your flesh wants that junk food. Yeah. And your soul has been liking the, the way it feels. <laughs> so we go back to it. You get it? All right. Verse 7. You must submit to and endure correction for discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not th thus train and correct and discipline? Now if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline, in which all of God's children share, then you are, not Ill then you are illegitimate offspring and not true sons at all. Moreover, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we yielded to them and respected them for training us. Shall we not much more cheerfully submit to the Father of Spirits and so truly live? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for only a short period of time and chastised us as seemed proper and good to them. But he disciplines us for our certain good that we may become sharers in his own holiness. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it, a harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness, in conformity to God's will, in purpose, thought, and action, resulting in right living and right standing with God. So then, brace up and reinvigorate and set right your slackened and weakened and drooping hands and strengthen your feeble and palsied and tottering knees. And cut through and make firm and plain and smooth straight paths for your feet. Yes, make them safe and upright and happy paths that go in the right direction. So that the lame and halting limbs may not be put out of joint, but rather may be cured. Strive to live in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. So I want to stop right there a second. Because all of this that she just went through, do you see how it's pointing at the, these trials that you're going to go through? Mm -hmm. I know I brought another word into it. Because I think it brings light to you, you're going to have to endure something to get better. You're, you're going to have to, as it was saying here, <laughs> brace up, re, reinvigorate. Uh, set right your slackened and weakened and drooping hands. That's what he's talking about. We, we, we tend to flow back whenever it seems too hard. We'll flow back into some ease way. And, and that's what God's saying. All right, come on. Get back in here with me. Get back in. 
keep looking at that hope tree keep building up those precious promises mm -hmm. keep keep moving forward with me in faith because when we step aside that's what draws us away we we get drawn away by those things that so easily beset us why because we look at things that oh my gosh it's so hard no you know, just what he said, brace up, reinvigorate, set right your slackened hands. Let's move out here together. I'm here with you. Remember that that it, there's songs and, and scriptures that we say so much uh, by by uh, Christ we can we can do mm -hmm. all things. What is right. that? <laughs> I know Which I song? missed. Uh... <laughs> but it's it's this this anointed one and his anointing by him we can do all things mm -hmm. we we have the ability if we draw it from him right you know what's funny they're all out there listening singing that song that we can't quite get right they got it <laughs> <laughs> so all right we're gonna move on and i'm gonna let her read quite a bit here just because it's a longer chapter and and i want you to hear as she's reading, how it, it, it keeps adjusting and, and moving toward us adjusting and keep on moving toward God. In faith, in, his, in trust in Him, believe in Him, drawing our strength from Him, right? To live this life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, mm -hmm. right? That's the, what I was looking for. Oh, I thought you wanted a song. Well, I know, I know the verse, but... I know there's a okay. song, too. Okay. <laughs> verse 15. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another, to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor, and spiritual blessing, in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and the many become contaminated and defiled by it. So other people will be contaminated by you slipping, you falling back. Mm -hmm. You see it? And falling back from God's grace is simply only relying on yourself instead of Him. What, what we have always said is the opposite side of that, which is other people will be blessed because of your doing what's right. Mm -hmm. you, of, of, of your obedience. Yeah. Right? That's what yeah. I was looking for you to say. Yeah. So as you are walking in obedience to God mm -hmm. and you've built up this hope tree and here you've got revelation knowledge and you're all excited, that's what comes when you got revelation knowledge of the Word of God. Your, your joy and excitement comes up. Like Brother Keith says, he says when, when your joy levels up, you know that you're believing for something and it, people should see it on your face yeah <laughs> as as you are in faith and you're you know you're in faith your joy is right there with it because you're expectant your expectancy is up and you're looking around as god's bringing it today i know he is and here that's how we're supposed to be about jesus coming back our faith is supposed to be up in that and here, our reliance, our expectancy, our joy of looking for Jesus' soon coming return. Mm. I think it might look this way. <laughs> God is coming back. Jesus is coming back to get us. Soon. He's going to call us up. Yep. Right? Okay. Verse 16. That no one may become guilty of sexual vice or become a profane godless and sacrilegious person as Esau did, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you understand that later on, when he wanted to regain title to his inheritance of the blessing, he was rejected, disqualified, and set aside, for he could find no opportunity to repair by repentance what he had done, no chance to recall the choice he had made, although he sought for it carefully with bitter tears. For you have not... I, I want to stop her right there. Because I think that's how people are going to feel whenever we're pulled up and out of here. When the rapture happens and we're pulled up and out of here, we meet Jesus in the air. Mm -hmm. They've got 
seven years of hard hardness, really hardness coming. So the little bit that we're going through right now, this little bit of enduring the onslaught, the enemies bringing through our relatives or, or through people close to us, friends and neighbors, whoever he can get stirred up against you to ask you questions that put you in the hot seat. Those things that we're enduring are nothing compared to what people are going to have to endure when we're taken up and out of here. They're, they're, they're going to be laying down their lives if they want to hold this. But are we laying down our lives? In such a way we are. But we're doing it in, in <laughs> enduring things that people say that is trying to, to take the word out. And you know, those people are not really the enemy. The enemy is using right. them. So don't look at the people as the enemy. Just recognize the enemy of who he is. And he's just working in people's lives. So attack him. Take your authority against and, him. And I want you to know this. Here, I, I, I'll, I'll, I was one of those people. I was born again, I believe. And here, I had gotten away from God. And here... I started saying things the enemy was saying instead of saying things God was saying. Because you got, just like the, I keep going back to, you got the, kind of like that old cartoon, you got the angel speaking good things to you, you got the devil speaking bad things to you. Those are thoughts that are coming mm -hmm. into you. Yeah. But what I want you to see is I was used in that against my own mom. She was trying to get me back on track bringing me back to repentance but I wasn't having it because my sisters weren't having it <laughs> my my sisters were egging me on and and saying all oh, all kinds of stuff about our mom against her and here the these things would were coming and and here I the devil was keep on bringing those thoughts up that my sisters would say against my mom but I love my mom and here, because of all the junk that the enemy was stirring up, and and I wasn't doing anything about it. I didn't know I could do something about it. Commanding the enemy to get out of here, you can do that. How do you? How did you stay out of all? You know, there's so much gunk out there, junk that the enemy has sowed into the human race. Uh, uh, sexual Im impurity and 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 marijuana and all the drugs and all of that stuff he sowed that into the body to make it in able to get to God right but they can they why didn't you everyone that's that didn't get into every single thing that the enemy sowed into the body the the body of the human race is what I'm talking about, not the body of Christ. Well, he sewn it in there too when he could, but why didn't you fall into every trap of the enemy? You decided. No, I'm not getting into marijuana. No, I'm not getting into alcohol. Did you get into lust then? Did you get into lusting after this or lusting after that? Were you so refined by your parents? that you stayed away from 90% of it, but you looked at other people with dis discourse, look, looked at other people as, oh, look at them. You had your nose stuck up in the air saying, oh, look at, look, look at them. Like you're so much better. No. Why would you look down on another person which is made in God's image? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. It's the enemy sowing those things into that person's life. Got it? That's that's what I wanted you to hear today. And here we're going to read through a whole bunch more of this, but be listening far how, how God starts changing it once again as he's going through and talking about this of what we're to look for. For you have not come, as did the Israelites in the wilderness, to a material mountain that can be touched, a mountain that is ablaze with fire, and to gloom and darkness and a raging storm. And to... You have to think about these people came to this mountain. I, I know I'm just going to add this little thing. <laughs> they saw things in the natural that were spectacular. Right. And still distrusted God. Right. Right? 
So us, in our little world, we have to look unto God and keep our attention, our focus on Jesus, right? Okay. And to the blast of a trumpet and a voice whose words make the listeners beg that nothing more be said to them. For they could not bear the command that was given. Even if a wild animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. In fact, so awful and terrifying was the phenomenal sight that Moses said, I am terrified, aghast, and trembling with fear. But rather you have come to Mount Zion, even to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless multitudes of angels in festal gathering, and to the church assembly of the firstborn who are registered as citizens in heaven, and to the God who is judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous, the redeemed in heaven, who have been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator, go-between, agent of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. So see to it that you do not reject him or refuse to listen to and heed him who is speaking to you now. For if they, the Israelites, did not escape when they refused to listen and heed him who warned and divinely instructed them here on earth, revealing with heavenly warnings his will, how much less shall we escape if we reject and turn our backs on him who cautions and admonishes us from heaven. Then at Mount Sinai his voice shook the earth, but now he has given a promise. Yet once more I will shake and make tremble not only the earth but also the starry heavens now this expression yet once more indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken that is of that which has been created in order that what cannot be shaken may remain and continue because of all that let us therefore receiving a kingdom that is firm and stable and cannot be shaken offer to god pleasing service and acceptable worship with modesty and pious care and godly fear and awe for our god is indeed a consuming fire do you see that wow how, how it just kept on changing mm -hmm. throughout this whole chapter but it's all us keeping our focus on jesus and moving toward him in faith mm -hmm. and here what are we doing we we have his precious promises that are better better promises than what they had of old because we're on this side of the cross we're on this side of the resurrection right mm -hmm. on this side mm -hmm. of the resurrection we see things a little bit differently that he's he has come and he will write on your heart those hope scriptures he will write those so much on your heart Remember, he's going to write on our hearts in the last days. That's what I've been talking about. He's going to build up, you build up this tree of hope, mm -hmm. what you're placing your hope on, and hint then by revelation knowledge, as you stick with it and keep your focus on it, he'll reveal things more and more, bring more light to that tree mm -hmm. that you can see how to walk in this day. Amen. Today, yeah. and here, build up a vision board of what you're believing for. That's what we crossed over and, and did this Sunday. Yep. Um, we're we're going to be going over that on these couple next Sundays, talking about believing God for what we're going to sow into the kingdom, mm -hmm. what we're going to, we, we then look at um, our debts, right. what, what debts and things that we owe. That we we know we know the state of our flocks, right. right? And we can do something about making them better. And then we we figure out what we're going to start placing toward that to eliminate it. Because if you're not moving to eliminate it, is God moving to eliminate it? He he puts his hand into your hand, and comes against what you're coming against, right? Right. This is what God put into my mouth as I would work out my 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 <laughs> in construction i would say thank you lord god that you put your your hand is in my work and your eye is continually upon me watching over me seeing to my prosperity 
those are all formulated out of the Word of God. And he dropped that into my heart as I was meditating on his word. And here, then I had something to focus on. Because I heard it coming out of my own mouth <laughs> as he gave it to yeah. me. And here, then I walked on with it. I said it day by day. And I, it kept my focus. Mm -hmm. Because I had spent time looking into his good law of liberty. It liberated me. Out of the debts I had, out of the things that I was having problems with. And anytime something came against me, I ran back to my prayer closet, got before God and said, God, help. <laughs> and I would say then, Father, your word says that you are my ever present help in time of need. And I need you. And I thank you for your help. Mm -hmm. Once I Amen. said, I thank you for my help, I vouched yeah. him and right. I said, I thank you for my help. He was my help. That's right. When and I looked for it. how he was helping. Yep. I focused on him and I looked for what I was to do next. Right. You see, it's it's those moving together, but it's the continuance as you continue in doing it. You can't do this for a day or two or a week or two or a month or two and stop. Just before the good is being built up and continue to be built in your life. Sure, I messed up and I stopped along the way in certain things. But I was, as soon as I saw things going awry, a, a wrong in my life, I ran back to him. I ran back to my prayer closet, repented. Go back. That's why I keep saying, run back to 1 John 1 9. Repent. Receive your forgiveness by faith. That's how you have to do it all by faith. And then move on with what he's told you to do. Right. Right? Right. Keep your hand to the plow. It's for that one that looks back that's not worthy. Well, thank God we can run back. If we look back, we can look back to 1 John 1, 9 and get cleaned up and put our hand back to that plow as if we never left it. That's what that means. That Jesus wiped away all of that stuff as if justified. That's what justified means. As Just if as I've, if I'd never sinned. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's what it's talking about because we've got better promises. Right. If they did it of old, they may have never recovered. But you see, in David's life, he recovered because he was taking things that were in the future as if it were for his day. Do you see those things? Yeah. Abraham messed up, but it wasn't accounted to him as sin. He had his belief accounted to him for righteousness. Right. We're to do better. Ever since Abraham, we're supposed to keep on getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. We're, we're on the ends of those betters. <laughs> We should be doing this better. Yeah. But we're having to go back and re remember these first things, these firstlings again. Right. Do you see all that? I believe you do. Because I put faith in my God that's bringing forth good words to you that you can grab a hold of. And I believe you're ble grabbing a hold of it by faith. I have faith in you. God has faith in you. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe you're grabbing a hold of what God's saying in your life inside you and confirming with thoughts that are coming through us, mm -hmm. through other ministers, through his word as you're speaking it out loud over your life. And you're grabbing a hold of it and moving on with him in this array of hope and faith in him. You got it? Got it. So always remember that God, God loves, loves you. you. And, and we, we love, love you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place. As you take his anointing to, to your, your world. world.